I thank Professor Jean-Marc Chardonneau for inviting me to the prestigious Congress of the French Society of Phlebology and extend cordial greetings to Hugues Cartier and all my colleagues. Three-dimensional regenerative ambulatory phlebotherapy, TRAP, is a technique of non-obliterative injection which acts on the perforating and superficial circulation. It cures varicose disease of the lower limbs by strengthening the vessel walls, shrinking the lumen, restoring valvular function and causing all visible vessels to disappear, whether they be varicose veins, spider veins or telangiectasias. To describe these effects we use the term regeneration. Three-dimensional regenerative ambulatory phlebotherapy is based on the hypothesis that the most frequent cause of varicose veins and telangiectasias in the lower limbs is weakening of the walls of the perforating veins, leading to valvular incontinence. To strengthen the walls and reduce the diameter of the vessels, thereby restoring valvular continence, a non-obliterative solution of sodium salicylate in a buffered hydroglycerin vehicle is injected into all vessels that are visible to the naked eye or on transillumination. As myopragia involves the entire superficial and perforating circulation, albeit to different degrees, a sufficient quantity of the solution to reach the perforating veins is injected. A three-dimensional pathology requires a three-dimensional treatment. The efficacy of this treatment is manifested by the disappearance of the vessels of the superficial circulation. TRAP uses a 2.5 milliliter syringe, 30 and a half G or 27 G needles and a sclerosing solution at a non-obliterative concentration. We use a 4% to 6% solution of sodium salicylate in a buffered alkaline hydroglycerin vehicle. The lower limb is subdivided into three functional regions medial, posterior and lateral. First the medial regions of the foot, lower leg and thigh are injected. Subsequently the posterior regions are injected followed by the lateral regions and so on. From 12 milliliters to 45 milliliters of solution is normally injected. The efficacy of the treatment is dose dependent. The operator begins by injecting the phlebectatic corona in the foot. Working upwards towards the root of the thigh, the operator injects, in order, all the vessels visible to the naked eye or on transillumination telangiectasias, spider veins, reticular veins, varicose veins, truncal veins and perforating veins. The amount of solution injected at each site must be sufficient when driven along by the hand to ensure that the solution reaches the perforating veins. The progressive weakening of the walls of the perforating vessels that connect the superficial circulation with the deep circulation causes the valves to become incontinent. The resulting anomalous pressure in the superficial circulation causes the vessels to dilate, an effect which is first manifested in those vessels whose anatomical structure is least resistant. Indeed, if the reticular veins in an area subjected to anomalous pressure easily become varicose, then ectatic capillaries are less likely to form. If the walls of the reticular veins are able to withstand the increased pressure, a dense network of telangiectasias is more likely to form. Telangiectasias form when the ectatic reticular veins are no longer able to absorb the rapid pressure increases caused by muscular contraction. Telangiectasias may form even in the absence of visible reticular veins if the capillary network is directly connected to an incontinent perforating vein. Telangiectasias and microtelangiectasias, matting, frequently form even after sclerotherapy and ablative or obliterative surgery on the large superficial veins as a result of the hemodynamic modifications caused by these techniques. 
Valvular insufficiency therefore has multiple clinical manifestations. But what is evident is that the ectatic veins that can be seen with the naked eye and those that can be seen only by means of translumination represent the blood that escapes from the deep circulation. The ectatic vessels therefore constitute escape valves for hemodynamic hypertension. If we reduce this venous network without treating the cause of the disorder, the pressure on the superficial circulation will increase and the initial unsightly conditions will soon be restored. Valvular insufficiency is dynamic. Contraction of the so-called peripheral heart, which is constituted by the leg muscles, generates the highest hemodynamic venous pressure, up to 300 millimeters of mercury. This region, which is of strategic importance for the correct functioning of the venous circulation, contains about 100 perforating veins. By contrast, the valvula and osteal incontinence of the great saphenous vein is of marginal importance with regard to hydrostatic pressure since the pressure at the ankle is 70 to 100 millimeters of mercury regardless of whether the valves are continent or not. The valvular incontinence of the great saphenous vein has a clinical significance if it is associated to saphenopopliteal incompetence and or valvular insufficiency of the perforating veins. Indeed, Cases have been observed of subjects born without valves in the great saphenous vein who do not manifest any disorder, while efficient valves have been found in the external iliac vein of subjects suffering from varicose veins. While the hydrostatic pressure in the veins at the ankle is of modest importance, the hydrostatic thrust in this region is of great importance as it constitutes the force exerted perpendicularly by the blood against the vessel wall. The hydrostatic thrust is the product of the pressure multiplied by the internal diameter of the vein and by a height of one centimeter. If the vein is dilated as a result of hemodynamic hypertension, the pressure inside it acts on a larger surface area and therefore develops greater force. The hydrostatic pressure is the same, but the hydrostatic thrust is greater. The greater hydrostatic thrust is not due to the greater quantity of blood, but rather to the greater internal surface area of the dilated vessel. Here are some examples at a hydrostatic pressure of 76 millimeters of mercury. This consideration highlights the importance of reducing the diameter of the vessels in the most distal regions of the leg, where the incontinence of the perforating veins creates the highest hemodynamic pressure. The mechanism hypothesized in varicose disease is myopragia of the vessel, dynamic dilation of the perforating veins, valvular insufficiency, hemodynamic hypertension, dilation of the veins, increased hydrostatic thrust, edema and compression of the tissues at the ankle, trophic disorders, ulcer. These anatomical physiological considerations have prompted us to adopt a radically different approach. Instead of obliterating or removing the veins, we decided to treat them. In clinical practice, the first course of injections of a non-obliterative solution into the three regions is carried out at the minimum efficacious concentration of the solution, about 4%. The more dilated the vessels are, the lower the concentration of the solution must be. The wall of a severely dilated vessel is more sensitive to the chemical action of the solution on account of its structural alterations and its marked inflammation. The more dilated the reticular veins are, the fewer venules and telangiectasias are present, and the more rapid the treatment will be. Once the established patient gets up, the limb is bandaged or the patient puts on elastic stockings. 
Elastic stockings are worn at risk of thrombophlebitis. An antiplatelet therapy is advisable. For hemodynamic reasons, only one limb at a time is treated. It is advisable to achieve valvular continence in as short a time as possible in order to prevent the anomaly. The aim of the therapy is to cause all the visible vessels to disappear from view, regardless of the severity of the disorder. This aim is pursued according to the concept that the presence of ectatic veins and or telangiectasias is a manifestation of hemodynamic hypertension stemming from an anatomic functional alteration of the perforating veins which must be corrected. The efficacy of this treatment is demonstrated by the fact that the vessels of the superficial circulation disappear from view and that this result is maintained over time. Superficial vessels disappear even though the solution is non-obliterative because they are no longer subjected to the anomalous hypertension caused by the incontinence of the underlying veins. Using a non-obliterative solution means that side effects are negligible. In 2003, the efficacy of three-dimensional injection of a non-obliterative solution was evaluated in a double-blind experimental study in our department. Two groups of 30 patients with symmetrical ectatic vessels were enrolled. A regenerative solution of sodium salicylate in a buffered hydroglycerin vehicle was injected. Telangiectasias were injected with 6 milliliters per treatment session, while veins were injected with 9 milliliters per session. Each area was treated twice. Standardized photographs taken before and after treatment were evaluated by means of Photoshop and software for pixel counting at the Faculty of Engineering of the University of Genoa. The mean percentage of improvement recorded in the two groups was 89.72%. The pathogenetic hypothesis behind our novel therapeutic strategy is confirmed by the clinical results and the data from the efficacy study. The three-dimensional non-obliterative action exerted on the vessel walls simultaneously corrects the hemodynamic impairment and the excessive capacity of the circulation. All of the visible vessels disappear from view. The traditional methods of treating varicose disease act on limited portions of the circulation. By contrast, three-dimensional regenerative ambulatory phlebotherapy TRAP, acts on the entire perforating and superficial circulation. The extensive three-dimensional action causes the visible vessels to disappear from view by shrinking the diameter and strengthening the walls of the non-visible vessels. The absence of notable side effects and the curative nature of TRAP suggest that this therapy can be used not only in patients with varicose veins and telangiectasias but also in young subjects with a familial predisposition to venous disease in order to prevent the onset of visible veins. In these younger subjects, the solution is injected through the gateway of the venous ectasias revealed by transillumination. It is added to the traditional methods of treating full-blown venous disease and paves the way to the application of early therapy.